So, the first seven rounds are done. It's time to cycle back around. Everyone's played everyone. Now it's time for everyone to play everyone again. Um, Karyakin and Aronian stay leading with five out of eight. Uh, Anand and Karawana now both half a point behind them. Karawana won a beautiful game today against Nakamura. Um, we'll take a look at that. Uh, today's matchups, Aronian with White against Giri, the aforementioned Karawana Nakamura game, Spidler, Karyakin, and Tapal of Anand. Uh, let's go. So Giri with, with another draw. Uh, he drew as black against Aronian today. I predicted going into this tournament, actually, that Giri would finish with 14 draws. Uh, that prediction's looking pretty good so far. Uh, anyways, um, these two actually had the same position uh, earlier this year in Zurich. Um, and in that game, Aronian went F4 here. Uh, here he played the more reserved, I guess, F3. Giri played Rook G8, which looks kind of funny, but what he wants to do is cover this pawn so he can go F5. Gain a bit of space and kick White's Knight off of the pretty good square at Thon. So, game continued like this. And Giri decided to activate his Queen's Bishop. Uh, so basically what's going on here is, um, uh, Black's got the Bishop pair. So if the center ever opens up, he can put those guys to use. Uh, but at the meantime, White's got pretty decent central control. Um, and yeah, there are no real weaknesses for either side to target. Uh, maybe White can claim a small advantage in theory, but it should really be equal. Um, one of White's main ideas is later he wants to get this knight to e5, uh, which since Black's gone f5, that's a pretty good square for the knight. Um, it's not, it's likely not going to stay there for very long because in all likelihood, um, either on its path to getting to that square or once it gets to that square, Black's going to chop it off with one of his bishops. So then what White will have achieved is that Black wouldn't have the bishop pair anymore. Um, but I mean, again, there's no real weaknesses to target. It's very difficult to achieve stuff. Um, like, the only possible target I can really think of is the c6 pawn, because it's sort of backwards. But at the moment, it's quite well defended, um, if a bit passively. Um, and Black... Uh, White always has to be careful that Black doesn't just go c5 and liquidate that weakness entirely. Uh, so fast-forwarding a bit to... what point do I want to fast-forward to? Let's say this point. Uh, Black's managed to break with g5 on the on the queen side. Uh, so he's activated this bishop a little bit. White's got temporary control of the h-file, but there's no real points of entry, so that's not a concern. Uh, White's managed to clamp down on this c5 break. Uh, but this pawn, we can't really call it a target because it's being quite well defended. This bishop's been activated along this diagonal, and now white decided to go for knight c4, uh, intending to bring it into e5, and black was having none of that. He chopped it off. Um, and now we've got an opposite color bishop position, uh, which was um, drawn in the next like 15 moves. Not a ton took place from this point forward. Uh, e5 was played um, just to sort of disrupt white central control. Um... E6. So he just won this pawn back quickly. And yeah, there's not really much to talk about here. This position was just drawn uh, rapidly because again, there's no, there's one passed pawn on the board, but it's not, it's not going anywhere because it's solidly blockaded by this king, and it's really not clear how this king is going to be kicked away so that the e pawn can continue to advance. If White had a dark square bishop or if White had a knight, that would be another story, of course, but with this light square bishop, it's um, very difficult, if not impossible, to challenge this blockade, and these rooks aren't really in a position to do much about it either. Uh, so that's pretty solid. This c pawn is not really under any under any threat, and black is is holding on very solidly. The computer claims a small advantage for White, but I don't, I don't believe that. And Giri was even willing to... Um, well, not sacrifice this pawn, but he took his control off of this pawn, uh, and these these pawns were traded off, which is a pretty a pretty decent uh, trade off for um, for Giri, for Aronian too. But he's managed to get rid of White's pass pawn um, at the cost of only his backwards pawn that was a quote unquote weakness. And yeah, this game was drawn um, within the next ten moves. So Svidler Karyakin was a really strange game. Uh, so White put all his pawns on light squares, uh, and now he finally got a chance to get his bishop outside the, the pawn chain with bishop h3. Um, and yeah, so if you avoid this exchange, that's reasonable, but this bishop now will be outside the pawn chain. Um, also, this knight on e4 is pretty good. It's going to be difficult to get rid of that guy, especially since if you go bishop c6 and exchange it, you might end up pretty weak on the light squares, considering White's bishops managed to get out, and it can then wreak havoc on the light squares and stuff. So, uh, Karyakin acquiesced to the exchange of bishops, um, and let's fast forward a minute. So, um, Black is attacking White's weak point, but White's got this pretty solidly defended, 
And even though this looks passive at the moment, because White has successfully shored up that guy, he's now ready to push his guys down the middle of the board. Uh, and White's got a specific idea in mind, as we'll see. So rook b8, d5, knight e5, rook b1. So White's got an idea, and that's to play d6 and undermine uh, this pawn chain. Uh, Karyakin decided he wasn't scared of that, and he played king g6. Um, in hindsight, maybe that's not the best idea, um, because after d6, c takes d6, uh, there's not really any al other alternative, rook takes b6, now this pawn is falling, uh, this pawn's going to be passed, uh, as well as the fact that potentially black's king isn't going to be all that safe, added to the fact that maybe these two guys can become weak someday. So, um, king h5 was played uh, to defend the guy on uh, h4, as well as get out of this pin along here, because if white wanted to, if black's king were on g6, he could win this pawn potentially with c5, um, with a pin. Uh, so he gets out of that, uh, white captures a pawn, rook d8, rook b5, c6, and now white plays a good move, g6 check. So he's temporarily sacrificing back his extra pawn, but he's unveiling his rook along this rank, he's opening up the g-file, so this rook is going to come around to g1 and do stuff along the g-file. And in addition, white is giving his pawn back, but these two guys are looking pretty weak. So this rook can come to g4, as it did in the game, and try to win one or both of those guys, which it did in the game. And again, black's king isn't looking all that safe at the moment. So as advertised, the rook's coming around to g1. Um, yeah, ideally black would like to take this guy. He's threatening this guy. If he can win this guy, then this pawn's going to be passed, but it doesn't look like he's got all the all the time for that. Uh, so, for example, rook bg5 puts this guy under a lot of pressure. Um, so, after defending it, then there's knight e8, and, yeah, this pawn is falling, and black's king is very, very unsafe. Um, so, I mean, the threat... Um, the threat, actually, is to play mate in two. So if, if black captures on e2, for instance, then there's a really cute mate. Pause your videos if you want to find it. Yeah, there's better than taking on g7. He can play knight f6 check. Uh, if g takes f6, then rook h5 mate, now that d8's covered by the rook. And if king back, then rook h 5s mate. So that's kind of nice. Uh, anyways, all that to demonstrate that black can't really afford to take all of the pawns that he wants to take. Uh, with White's rook so active, he's kind of got to passively defend for a little bit. Um, and rook g4 was played, rook h5, and now White started taking these things. Uh, and now Black decided his king was sort of safe enough to take this guy, um, and at least get one pawn back for his troubles. But Black's in a lot of danger anyways. But Black's also intending to, if he has time, capture on e2 and then maybe make something out of his past e pawn. So White's got to watch out for that. Uh, he can't be too lax about what he does. Um, Spiddler in the game played rook f h4, which admittedly I didn't actually watch the postmortem, but I was told that he, he had overlooked g6. Um, he thought the knight g6 was forced, after which rook g4 and uh, Black's in a lot of in a lot of trouble. Uh, instead. G6 um, stops the mate uh, with a gain of tempo. Um, this move wouldn't really help. Not rook h7, that definitely wouldn't help. Uh, rook h8, this check doesn't really help. After king here, um, there's no mate. With a knight on f8, there's no mate. Um, and uh, black's ready to take this guy next, and there's not a whole lot uh, to be done about that. So the game's probably about equal then. Uh, it should be a draw, because... Uh, Black will have his own pass pawn to counter at White's pass pawn. Neither of them will probably actually turn into queens. They'll probably just both end up being taken and traded for each other, and then a draw will be had. Um, but yeah, uh, Svidler played rook e5 instead. But after rook takes e2, uh, material was restored. And again, it's uh, the same sort of thing that we just talked about. This pawn's going to advance, uh, but Black's rooks are going to be pretty active. Um, and yeah, this is probably a draw. Um, so, rather than rook f h4, the computer is recommending knight f5, which does two things. First of all, it threatens this cube mate on e7. Uh, second of all, it hits the pawn on e3. So the point is that after something like, well, g6, knight e7 check, king g7, rook e5, rook takes e2, knight d5. So we see white's maneuvered his pieces around and coordinated them, nice, coordinated them nicely to be able to win the pawn back. Um, 
on e3. So white's going to he's going to capture black's pass pawn. He's going to restore his pawn advantage and he's going to try to win the double rook and knight ending with an extra pass pawn on the c file. Um it's not entirely clear how simple the win is for white. Um but it definitely this div does give white definite winning chances as opposed to the game which didn't really give him so much. But, I mean, in any event, Fiddler fought well to even get any winning chances at all from a position earlier that was looking like it was dead drawn. Uh, so, yeah, anyways, interesting game. Uh, let's move on. So, Topalov Anand was drawn without too much excitement. Um, that's probably good for Topalov. Uh, he's managed to stop the bleeding, at least, and stem the tide of losses. He's still in clear last, but um, he he's working on damage control at this point. So, yeah, this position uh, should be equal. It's not entirely clear how to make progress from this point. Like, with white setup, the obvious plan is to try to break with e4, but that's extremely difficult to do, like, ever, on account of the pressure that black has on this pawn. So e4 will almost always either hang the d-pawn or put the d-pawn under a lot of pressure. Um, so if white plays some neutral move, black, I guess, will continue rook a d8, uh, and it's going to be really, really hard to ever play e4, thematic as it may be. Uh, so Topalov instead sort of gave up on that plan and just played knight f4. Knight takes f4, e takes f4. And now we reach a really, really static structure, um, in which pawn breaks are unlikely. Uh, because, yeah, e4 was the last real pawn break that could happen in the position. Um, that's obviously not going to happen anymore. So it's not clear, uh, how the, um, how the deadlock is going to be interrupted. Uh, so yeah, they just traded stuff along the e-file, and yeah, you reach this ending, uh, in which, yeah, sure, you've got temporary control of the e-file, but there's no, there's no point of entry. d4 is a bit tender, but eh, uh, how do you actually attack it again, and even if you do attack it again, white can probably defend it again with this bishop, and yeah, not a lot happened, really, as far as I can tell, um, and the game was drawn. Okay, quick, guess which opening this position came out of? Believe it or not, this was a Berlin. Um, yeah, this looks really like a Sicilian. I mean, if Black's C-Pawn weren't still on C7, I would say this was a Sicilian. No, this was a Berlin defense in which Caruana decided to castle queenside. I should mention, this is Caruana Nakamura, by the way. Caruana decided to castle queenside. Um, and now this is looking like an English attack uh, in the Sicilian, which is great. Uh, yeah, so this game goes out to everyone who thinks the Berlin defense is always boring. Uh, in any event... Um, yeah, both sides are attacking on, on opposite wings. Uh, White castle queenside, and he's shoving his g-pawn up the board, and Black... Um, it looks like Black's attack should be faster, because he's already managed to get his pawns here. But on the other hand, Black has played the move f6, which is a hook to, to hook onto. So, he, I wonder if is already threatening, like, knight takes g7 stuff? Um, I wonder. So, like, if king h8 or something... Knight takes g7. Does this work? King takes g7, g takes f6. If you take this, bishop g5. I'm improvising this, by the way. Um, king h8. Um, then, like, I don't know, d4 looks interesting. Because uh, if you take, take, and then there's threats along here. This looks interesting. It might be possible. Um, anyways... Uh, it's difficult to see how black is actually going to break through, because when he takes on a2 check, white plays king a1, and it's important to note that in that sort of thing there, the pawn on a2 actually provides a sort of shield for white's king. Um, black would almost rather that pawn not be there. That was demonstrated after b takes a2 check, king a1, um, yeah, now this pawn's kind of in the way. Uh, so after takes, takes, a3, b3, this side of the board's kind of blocked up, and I think White's already got a clear advantage. At least the computer's saying White's got a clear advantage. Frankly, I have no idea what's going on here, but my human instinct tells me that White should be better, because White's still able to break open a file. Meanwhile, you, yeah, White King's got a double blanket of pawns, which is nice. Um, and yeah, there's no sacrifices on b3 that really work. So yeah, it's not clear how to break through. This knight's headed for b4. Caruana says, no, you're not going to do that. Um... So, yeah, Nakamura tried to defend with a bishop there. Maybe now is the time to break open everything with d4. Um, but he went knight d2 instead, which is a quieter move optically. But the knight is coming around to um, e4, where it adds pressure to this guy. f takes g5, rook takes g5, so the c file's open, g7's the target, f6 is the break, uh, and white's... 
should be close to winning already because he's made some some visual progress on the king side. This g file, the knight coming to e4, f6, black's king's in a lot of danger. And meanwhile, as weird as it, as it is to say, white's got no real weaknesses on the queen side um, to, to break through on. Knight c5, so stopping the knight from coming to e4. Well, not stopping, but he'll exchange off the knight if it comes to e4. Um, or, sorry, if knight e4, then he'll probably cap from b3, is what I meant to say. Um, so rook g3. Um, so he's preparing to... What he wants to do is he wants to exchange off this knight on c5 and then put the knight on e4. So that's keeping b3 secure, and it's allowing this knight to go into e4. But, of course, he couldn't do that right away. He couldn't exchange here right away because his rook would hang. So he's moving his rook out of the way. Uh, Black tries Desperation E4, which absolutely doesn't work. Um, but it's hard to suggest an alternative. Queen takes D3 um, is possible. Um, but after takes, takes... Uh, White's point is that after Knight E4, the is that the Knight's attacked and Knight F6 is threatened. So White wins some material there. So E4 is kind of just Desperation. After takes, takes, takes... Um, there's, again, there's no attack on White's king. And... Uh, White has got all of these guys, this rook coming here, attacking, f6 coming, and Black's king will very much not survive this. Um, yeah. So we just see all of the pieces calmly come in. And after c4, um, resignation was, was had. Um, Black played bishop g4 just to desperately sort of close all of the files, um, but ultimately this didn't work. Now, um... The bishop's hanging. Obviously, you can't take it right away because of the threat on b3. So white meets that threat with tempo, and Nakamura resigned because after the queen moves, uh, the bishop on h4 will fall. Um, so that was a crazy game, uh, but sort of one-sided. Like, normally with race attacks, you see both sides, like, threatening mate on various turns. But that was, like, black looked like he was attacking for a bit, but then his attack just died out, and Karawana just sort of calmly took over. And it was instructive how he didn't rush his attack. Like, around this point, uh, a lot of people will probably be tempted to do something hasty, like take and open the g-file ASAP, or play g6. Which, by the way, um, isn't especially good, because it can be met by h6. Um, and this is only a good thing to do if you can potentially sacrifice on h6 and break in. But with this bishop on f8, that's never really possible, because black's really covering this guy twice. Uh, so if you try queen d2 and bishop takes h6, that doesn't work because he's covering it twice over. But yeah, he just calmly brings the knight into e4 and just waits for his chances. Um, and he knows that he doesn't have to rush because black has absolutely nothing. And it's really instructive how these pawns actually block black's own attack. Um, and despite this being a Berlin, this is probably a better lesson for Sicilian players even. Um, given the, the, how Sicilian-like this game became. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think that's going to be it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, like and subscribe and whatever, and I will see you for round eight. Or nine. Nine? Is this round eight? Yeah, this is round eight. For round... Yeah, I give up.